Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Sports Central. I'm Neil Duncan. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you today. We're going to talk college football right here in Polk County, and we're also going to talk about the new Winter Haven Fieldhouse and Conference Center. Stick around, everybody, for this week's edition of Sports Central. Everybody. Welcome back to Sports Central. I'm Neil Duncan and uh, joining me uh, next to me, Sam Baker. And uh, we, we certainly uh, look forward to this show. Uh, this first segment is going to be brought to us by Harry's Seafood Bar and Grill. But uh, you know me, I'm a college football guy. I'm a high mm -hmm. school football guy. So I always enjoy uh, when we get to the show. Yeah, this is always such a great show. And I'm excited to get to talk to our next three guests because, I mean, the, the pedigree of Polk County football is really present today because we have representation from all uh, college football teams in the county, and it's going to be fun to talk to them. Well, absolutely, and let's go ahead and get to it. Our first college coach uh, with us today is uh, head coach Keith Bearfield. Of course, he is the head coach at Southeastern University. And, Coach, welcome back to Sports Central. It's always a pleasure to be here. Well, we appreciate you uh, stopping by uh, each and every season. Of course, uh, all of our coaches. But uh, you know, last season, seven and three overall record, five and one in conference play. Uh, I know you don't care about this statistic, but uh, I know your uh, information, your SIDs or whatever, they're good at getting this information. 20 total returning starters from last year. Uh, talk about what that means for continuity of the program and maybe what some of the expectations might be this season. Well, what that speaks to more than anything else is, you know, what we had to do last year to get our program rebuilt because we lost 20 starters, or excuse me, 20 seniors from the season before in 2017. So we replaced those, and, and we had a we had a respectable season. We thought our, our coaches and players did an outstanding job, but you know we're able to flip that now. We're sort of losing uh, 20, where we've got 20 returning. So we hope that that bodes well for us. But you never know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and and you look at the the first game uh, September seventh uh, coming up against uh, Campbellsville University. But talk about the process, uh, how you approach a team with twenty returning starters versus you know losing twenty seniors the previous year. How have things changed in maybe fall camp and then as you head to that first football game? Well, a year ago we had a lot of meet and greets. Uh, the coaches got <laughs> to know. Uh, uh, introduced themselves to the players, the players introduced themselves to the coaches, and it was a big process of finding out just exactly what we had. And uh, you know, it, it took us uh, it took us a while to get it figured out. You know, we uh, uh, we had a couple of people in positions that that uh, might have should have been playing somewhere else, and, and things like that. So uh, we we got it figured out and uh, and finished strong. But this year, uh, those those players are back. And uh, you know we've been able to hit the ground running and get a little bit further along in the first week than we than we would uh, normally if uh, we had a lot of guys re returning and uh, are not non returning and and uh, it, it's been very effective for us to uh, to open up camp this Monday and where we are at the end of practice today uh, is a lot different than it was a year ago. We feel like uh, our guys had a lot of a lot of carryover from the from the fall and the spring and uh, they're performing performing well and we're trying to integrate you know our, our new kids in too and, and we've uh, got some guys that we're very happy to have in our program mm -hmm. and I know I mean we were kind of talking about a little bit earlier but the turnaround time is so fast for you all uh, you said this past Monday was your first day back in practice you know three weeks away now seems you know seems like tomorrow basically you have your first game what are you guys working on now that you're just you you, you have to get that going before you guys can prepare for games well again we're, we're basically finding out you know what we have and, and who we're going to be as, as a team uh, you know we do bring some new guys in you've got to have depth it's not just 20 guys you know we have 11 starters on, on each side of the ball and that uh, to be too deep is what we really look for you know you need uh, 22 on each side so there are guys that are coming in that are going to have to give us uh, some some outstanding support play when our when our starters aren't in there, and uh, we're trying to develop that. Find out who can help us, who who has to uh, develop a little bit more, and and possibly if they can help us later on in the season when you know when injuries start to become a factor. But uh, uh, it's it's a it's a process that uh, you look forward to every year because you never know exactly what each season is going to bring. You're working with a, a new group of young men every year 
and uh, you, you have to fit all the pieces together. And it's been it's been fun so far. And I think I think our, our coaches have a great handle on, on what we've got. And uh, after after this week, you know, we can go full speed ahead, start looking more towards our first opponent. Well, preseason rankings are just that. They're preseason rankings, and uh, obviously the national media is noticing that you have a number of starters back and the success that uh, you guys have had recently coming in preseason rank 19th in, in AIA preseason top 25. I always like to ask this question because I know what the answer is going to be. How much do you put into that, and, 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 and how do you keep uh, the players away from maybe overconfidence in the fact that, yeah, we're ranked, and yeah, we got all these people back, but we got to stay focused to the task at hand. How do you deal with all that? Well, I can, I can tell you this. Uh, you know, if we had finished the season at 19th, we would have really appreciated it last year because we would have been in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. We finished 21st, and if we'd have been in the top 20, we'd have, we'd have been a playoff uh, participation. Uh, but uh, starting at 19, hopefully we can at least stay there and uh, earn the respect that we've been given. But, you know, I know we've got – Ten teams on our schedule that definitely want to prove otherwise, and you know they would like to be in that spot, and and that's the challenge of the year is to go out and and week to week prepare to, to to meet an opponent and and prove that we belong to be there, and if and if we continue to win, hopefully move up, so uh, we don't have to worry at the end of the season biting our nails on whether we'll mm -hmm. make it into the playoffs or not. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just know personally, I'm definitely looking forward to that first game. And, and you all do so much, uh, you know, so much presentation for the games in general. All right, you guys, I mean, it, it's such a great time to go out and watch some of your football games. Uh, just kind of walk us through what that game day experience is like and what that means to your players. Well, you know, we, we have a tradition, albeit a, a brief tradition. You know, this will be our sixth year. But uh, I guess, you know, for our players, it all starts off uh, – you know, at five o'clock when we have the fire walk and we go through and our fans are tailgating uh, there and we walk through Del Prado and, and along where, where all of our uh, tailgaters are and, and we get to uh, see the fans and they get to enjoy that and they have, you know, the sirens going, you know, for not, not for a hurricane warning but for a fire <laughs> alarm and uh, they have everything up on the, on the scoreboard about the, about the fire walk and it's a, it's a very, very important time and then, you know, I'll tell this quick story. All the things that we do uh, pre-game with, with the helmet and the smoke and the fire and all of this and that, uh, before, before we had our first season, they were, they were looking at the layouts for, for all the, the field and how it was going to appear and all of that. And I was asked to come over and sign off on the, on the field. You know, and, and I knew it wasn't going to take because I knew that it had really all, already been decided. I just needed to sign it for for formality's sake, <laughs> but when I was over in that meeting, they weren't talking about how the field would look. They were talking about fire coming out of the scoreboard, the fire coming out, the smoke. They'd found a place where they had smoke that would roll out and not and not you know uh, go go up, and the flags and all of this, and what we're going to do after we scored, and 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 all of all this. So they talked about that for 45 minutes before I got to sign off, and I I walked out. I go back to my office and I tell my coach, I said, guys, it doesn't matter how many games we win. But if those guys don't get to shoot off their fireworks, we'll all get fired. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was that was our goal is to is to have enough action and, and have our part of the show be active enough to where they'll get to shoot off their fireworks. And mm -hmm. so far, it's worked out. Well, and we can uh, pose this question to some of the other coaches when when they come on during their segment. But let's talk about the brand of football of you know Polk County, three teams that are competing in in AIA and. You know, things have changed with technology, so I think we say it each and every year, but we want to make sure that we, we say it again for those watching at home. With technology the way it is, you know, if you are Florida State or Miami or the Gators or whomever, you can record that particular game, just turn off your notifications, but support this local college football because the value is there, the quality is there, all those things. So if you were to, in a couple sentences, tell the, the viewers at home what this college football looks like, what would that be? Well, I would, I would say competitive. I mean, these coaches and these teams go out every week and they put a very competitive product out on the football field. And it is reminiscent of, 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 of days when, uh, you know, guys play football for fun. It's not just for money. It's mm -hmm. not just for, for uh, uh, clothes and things like that. These guys go out there and they play for fun and they give it their all. And, and they're very productive. They're very good. And they're very skilled. Even, even at this level, there are, there are players that 
are highly skilled and have the ability. You know, we, we had a young man on our team for four years, and he didn't even get a scholarship offer coming out of high school. And now he's on the roster with the New York Jets. Well, you know, who would have known that? Mm -hmm. I would never have guessed it when he walked on campus, but we watched him develop for four years. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of players, there are a lot of people that are overlooked by the big schools that come into the small schools and they play for the love of the game and they develop and and local people have the opportunity to go out and watch these watch these young men. And and it's a it's a great time, it's a fun time and these guys these guys get after it. Well and obviously High school football is is well loved uh, in in Polk County, and uh, I think we ask this each year. But just quickly talk about uh, the ability to not have to go far to recruit some of these student athletes because of the amount of talent right here in Polk County. Well, I spent five years in the state of Oklahoma, uh, coaching and recruiting, and I did not miss a year coming to Florida to to recruit. I had several representatives from the state of Florida coming here the, into the state of Florida. I can I can tell people this: there are more athletes to be recruited within a 50 mile radius of Lakeland, Florida than they were in the entire state uh, where I was was before. I was not in a heavy populated area. Uh, eight man football was the king yeah. where, I, where I was yeah. coaching and we don't have too many eight man football teams uh, in the state of Florida because there's so many players that, that want to play this game at whatever whatever level. So we're, we're, we're more, than, more than pleased to be here and it's a very very fertile ground to, to find players and to to be able to develop players. Well, Coach, we, we wish you nothing but success in the upcoming year. Of course, we don't take sides when, you, when you're playing Weber or Warner or vice versa. We just enjoy college football. So good luck to you, and we appreciate it. And uh, uh, hopefully we can have you back soon here on Sports Central. Well, thank you very much. I know you don't pick sides, but I do appreciate y'all wearing red and black. <laughs> well, that, that, well, thank you, because I know when Coach Scott comes up here, I'm going to hear about that. But uh, Coach Keith Fairfield, thanks so much. Thank you. All right, well, recently, uh, Polk County Sports Marketing was able to partner with USA Water Ski and Lake Sports, and uh, they did a great event out at Lake Silver in Winter Haven uh, where they're teaching the sport of water skiing to some folks that maybe not would typically have that opportunity to do it. Check out this package. Uh, Sam and Neil will be right back here on Sports Central. Well, we were fortunate to uh, receive a grant from the Women's Sports Foundation um, called Sports for Life. And the purpose of that grant program is to um, allow opportunities in sport uh, for folks that may not have the opportunity to do so. And for us, our sport of water skiing is, um, is difficult at times. There's a lot of barriers uh, to entry into our sport. So this grant has allowed us the opportunity uh, to give some young women and some young girls um, a chance to come out and get on the water for the first time. The Get on the Water Learn to Ski program was designed to help girls that wouldn't normally be able to um, have access to water skiing learn to ski. We partnered with Girls Inc. Um, and their summer program to get these girls out here learning to ski for the very first time. And a lot of the girls that are participating in this program, this is the first time they've ever been on water, period. Uh, most of them have never been on a boat or behind a boat. Uh, most have never done any type of water sport at all. So for them to get the opportunity to experience it for the first time, uh, and actually some of their girls were able to get up uh, on two feet on their skis the, the first time they went out. Uh, to see the, the, the excitement on their face and the smiles uh, makes it all worthwhile. This is an absolute wonderful new opportunity. It is not something we have ever done. It's not like anything we've ever done. And um, I'm just so excited that the girls are going to be able to, to experience this. The team came out the Monday before they actually hit the water and the girls were asked if any of them had ever water skied and none of them raised their hands. So it's an awesome opportunity for them that we're really excited about. So when I first came to like ski, 
Um, I was kind of nervous because I've first I've never swam in a lake before and I've never skied before. So at first I was a little bit nervous, but then I ended up doing really good and the people that were helping me, they were really encouraging and they had a lot of faith in me like of what I was doing because I fell a couple of times, but when I did it, I finished the rest the whole time and they said I was really good and I can get farther into skiing. What I've learned is how to ski and it's very fun and I would love to come back and do more things with skiing and at least just enjoy probably a year here because it's really fun and it's a great experience. It's actually a lot of fun. A lot of girls, like they're, they're my friends, so I have really fun time hanging out with them. And skiing makes it even better because you're experiencing something that a lot of people haven't before. The program was made possible by a sponsorship, a grant from the Women's Sports Foundation. Um, the program is called Sports for Life, um, and it's Women's Sports Foundation and ESPNW that uh, provide a grant for programs just like this. The Cypress Garden team um, has, has given us all the volunteers for this. They're volunteering their, their time, they're, they're volunteering their lake and their facility and their boats and you know it could not be done without those guys. Um, and yeah, we do have some, some kids that are part of the team at Cypress Garden sort of helping us out as well. Uh, so having that interaction between you know uh, an adolescent that understands the sport and, and going with one that has never done it before, I think there's a comfort level there. Um, knowing that, that one of your peers uh, can do this. So uh, we do appreciate all the help that Cypress Garden has given. Special thanks to the sponsors and the USA Water Ski and Lake Sports who were able to receive the grant to be able. This is not costing our girls anything to come out here and learn. And it is just an amazing opportunity and we express great thanks to them and to the grantors that gave them the money so that we could do this. Our, our mission is inspiring all girls to be strong, smart, and bold, and this definitely falls into that mission. They will learn something new. Everybody. Welcome back to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Sam Baker in this uh, second segment going to be brought to us by the Hilton Garden Inn. But mm -hmm. uh, some good footage there, you know, really introducing the sport of water skiing. Uh, of course, they partnered with the Cypress Gardens water ski team and uh, they won multiple championships and they do the free uh, the free ski show each month there at Lake Silver. And, and not only are they doing a, you know, keeping the brand alive of what was Cypress Gardens, uh, the, the water ski team, but they're giving back to the community in a serious way. Mm -hmm. It's cool to see USA Water Ski partner with such a great organization like Girls Inc. and getting out there and like you said, just furthering and making sure the sport is, is living on, which I think also goes into a lot with, you know, with the Elite Cable Park opening and something we've talked about in the past, yeah. but just really making the sport more accessible in general. Water ski capital of the world. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, our next uh, segment here, we're going to bring on an old friend of Sports Central, uh, not necessarily an old friend of Neil Duncan, but an old <laughs> friend of Sports Central. <laughs> That's the head coach of Weber International University, uh, Coach Kelly Scott. And Coach, of course, I'm kidding. Welcome back to Sports Central. It's good to be with you. <laughs> I, I see that on your face. I feel weird between you guys. I feel well, like there's a long switch. Hit, yeah, there's a long history here, but... Uh, but uh, coach, of course, you've been uh, part of Weber for a long, long time, and you guys are coming off a, a seven and three season, three and three in conference play. Um, let's look back real quick at, at last year, and then let's talk about what you have coming in this year, and maybe what some of the expectations are. Well, last year was a not a good year because I don't think we uh, achieved what we were capable of. 
Uh, lost a few guys, but right now, uh, really enjoying this football team we're with right now. Uh, great work ethic, uh, grinding, and I don't know, we might be all right if I don't screw them up. <laughs> now, now, is that coach speak or? No, that's honest. So, I, I, I like this football team. Okay. They, uh, they're hard workers, yeah. they're on time. Good. You know, they're taking care of the details. And I think if you take care of the decals early, it, it'll prove pretty, pretty good in the long run. When you talk about the grind, of course, it's a long season. And really, the season doesn't stop because of the weights and the conditioning and, and, and all that. But this has to feel like the fun part of things because oh. coaches that I've been around for a long time, it's about the teaching. The, the wins and losses, obviously, you know, that the fan base and, and people get into that, but really about the teaching. So you, it sounds like to me you're saying that this, this team is coachable and, and you're expecting some big things. I really think they've come a long way just in their approach to the game. Uh, this has been a trying, we're putting it, we put in a new turf stadium this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I might be on it tomorrow. Because it's all construction projects go, they're never on time. You know mm. that. <laughs> so, uh, but it, it, but it's really interesting to watch, fighting through the adversity, keeping positive, and I, I really think some of these things will pay off as the season because nothing ever goes as you plan. I mean, you didn't really think you'd be here this long, did you? <laughs> I don't know if I thought so, but I'm glad to be here. Yeah. I mean, geez, no. <laughs> but, but and sorry, I keep. Maybe we do no, need to yeah, move yet. That's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> but you, you talk about that. But the new stadium. Just to be clear, the the home football games this year will be at uh, the Winter Haven Stadium until further notice. Correct. I think the first two will be okay. at Winter Haven. Uh, we had a big flood down mm -hmm. there. Yeah. A 10 inch rain that one day and kind of slowed the construction people down a little bit. So right. we're a little behind schedule right now. But to have a home field and get back on campus, I think it's gonna be a really neat thing for the school. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna ask more, like what does that mean for you as far as like recruiting and how much you can you can tell it to your your, your kids or your, your guys you have coming up, hey listen, like this is gonna be a great brand new facility that we're building and we're putting time into, into this. Uh... I, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's huge to be quite <laughs> honest with you. I mean, to have facilities is everything. Yeah. Uh, in the past, we've been kind of recruiting on who we are and what the school stands for. And now, for the guys to be able to see it, I think that's a big deal. Well, and along those lines, um, we didn't really address this with Coach uh, Bearfield, but um, the social media aspect and the posting of all the offers and all that stuff it has completely changed things and it's probably further pressured the the arms race if you will all the way from the power five all the way down through football oh there's no doubt i think uh curb appeal mm -hmm. i think it's what they call it in real estate mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to have the curb appeal you got to have the glitter uh, unfortunately in life because sometimes it's about the value of what you're getting out of your education and the camaraderie of your teammates. And that, to me, that should be the most important thing. But the recruiting thing, hitting that point, has changed. I mean, every kid has a video. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, if he got in two plays, you're gonna get to him two plays of video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and it's just, it's, sometimes it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Well, to the, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say every every recruit seems like a five-star recruit in their highlight tape because they will put their best plays, their plays on that. Thus, we call it highlight tape. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a great, that's a, I was just getting ready to, along those lines. How do you weed through that? How do you, because it's not just about Saturdays and it's not just about getting ready for us. It's year-round. How do you do that? Well, for, for us, one, we're going to look at highlights. That's what catches your attention. Mm -hmm. And then I want to see a game film. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, I want a young man to sit in my office. I want to know who he is. Mm -hmm. No, not, you know, you better know what kind of young man you're dealing with because uh, it's kind of like picking your wife. Mm -hmm. Once you pick her, you got to live with it. And it's the same thing with recruiting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you pick them, you got to live with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, the first game uh, is upcoming on the 31st uh, against Middle Georgia State University. No, we're, we're actually opening the 24th in, against Reinhardt. Oh, okay. In, in uh, uh, almost North Atlanta. And so we're kind of excited about it. They were a uh, national runner-up two years ago. So it's going to be a good competition, good measuring stick to find out where we are at. I'm sorry, I misread that. The first home game is on the first 31st. First home game, yes. Okay, and that will be against Middle Georgia State. That will be at Winter Haven. Yes. Um, and, and then the first two games. So obviously just check with the, the Weber International University uh, website sure, to make sure I'm sure that, that social media will cover it a million different ways. Yeah, I bet it will. <laughs> I bet it will. But let's talk about college football in Polk County. 
because it continues just to get better and better. Of course, we already talked about Southeastern. We're going to talk to you. And we're also going to talk to to Warner. But high level competition, great athletes. Um, really, I think if there's one uh, disappointment is. Uh, there aren't enough people watching this at the games and, and, well, and really should be. And, and that's what I tell people. Come out and watch one game. Yeah. And you'll really be surprised. Uh, it's really neat. When we started at Weber, we were the first little school to try this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think now next year in 2020, there'll be eight schools playing here in the state of Florida. Um, and nobody understands the value. Uh, young men are a little different than young ladies. When they get out of high school, they are not really thinking about their education. But if we can hook those guys on playing football, and about their sophomore year, they figure out this education thing might be kind of important to them. <laughs> yeah, I think you were there, Neil. Okay, let's just go there. <laughs> so using football as the bait to get those guys four-year degrees right. and making them productive in the state of Florida, I think is huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is that is the goal at this, especially is you know is 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 getting them out and getting them an education using football as a tool, and I, I know that's extremely important, especially in the game. Well, I think you, if you look at all levels, mm -hmm. that's the case, and and people don't always see that, but that NFL career, the average I think is two and a half three years. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, at the age of twenty six, there's a little bit of life left afterwards, yeah. and so you know that education will last those guys a lifetime, and uh, that's kind of what we provide for young men. I think since in the 18 years, we're up to almost 400 graduates right now in the football program. And, and that's kind of a little more important than, sure. I, mean, I love those wins and losses, don't get me wrong there. Yeah. Ain't what I'm telling you. Yeah. But boy, getting these guys to understand the importance of this education and how it can change their life. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think the, the fact that you look at uh, Polk County as a whole, you know, uh, of course, the Flying Tigers have been here for quite a while, and the Detroit Tigers were spring training, but you have professional basketball, you have professional soccer, you've got pro rugby, you've got college football. I mean, it, the county has changed significantly over the last 10 years, and, and this college football thing, you know, looks like it's going to stick around. Yeah. <laughs> Not just in Polk County, but in general. Uh, but it is such a, such a, a you know, family-friendly, affordable activity, and as I mentioned before, you can have your state school loyalties, but get out there and support this because as you said coach come one time and you'll come a lot you know you'll be out there multiple times so let's look at the team I know you kind of we've kind of talked about it a little bit but what is the expectation this year I know that they're they're coachable they're they're moving in the right direction but what what are you setting or what have you guys talked about internally well well defensively we've been solid for about 18 years mm -hmm. play pretty good defense uh, my offensive coordinator has been around now two years the kids have picked up the system. Uh, I think that will be our biggest improvement this year as far as just getting their, you know. It, I've told him, I said, you know, all you got to do is give me 35 points a game, and I think we got a good chance here now. That's it. That's all we need. Just so, uh, easily, easily delivered 35 points. So it's track meet. Uh, I think that's what people come to see anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the old three to nothing games that, uh, gosh, as a defensive guy, I love. But a lot of people find that boring. Well, I mean, you look at the last Super Bowl. Everybody think it's kind of listed as the worst Super Bowl in history, and it was, you know, it was 7-3 seven, seven, or 3-0. Oh, I, th or, I, I don't thought it was remember. one of the best I'd ever watched. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Well, Coach, we wish you good luck. And, uh, again, that first home game will be uh, August 31st at 1.30 p.m., and that's in uh, Winter Haven Stadium there against Middle Georgia State University. But you have a game prior to that, and we wish you good luck. And, uh, Appreciate that. Any man. parting shots you have for me before you go Neil, up I'm there? Gonna, I'm going to try to go one year without picking on you. I think oh. that ship has sailed. <laughs> Well, best of luck to you on that. <laughs> on, 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 on camera. Camera. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Coach, thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. You. Appreciate it. All right. Well, we have some great footage. Uh, speaking of Winter great Haven, footage. speaking of the Chain of Lakes and uh, the Cypress Gardens water ski team, Paddleboard Winter Haven, uh, not too long ago, a little bit long, you know, a, little, a few years back, yeah. but it's great footage. Uh, you're going to see me actually on a paddleboard on the Chain of Lakes, and no, I don't wipe out. So check this out. Neil and Sam be right back here on Sports Central.
Hey, I'm Jessica and we're here with Paddleboard Winter Haven at the Lake Summit Boat Ramp. Most of our group are paddleboard newbies, so we're going to get some instructions and then head out. First thing we're going to do is everybody's going to grab a paddle and we're going to get those set up for you. Front of the paddle. For a couple of you guys it's easy. A couple of you guys have this nice what I call a bone on the front. It actually peeks out. Most of them have this crease in the back. That's the back. That's always going to face to your back. Every board has some kind of carry handle, whether it's the indent or the actual pop-up handle. Well, why does it matter we're not carrying them? It matters because when I put you in the water, that's where you want to be. We're going to go out here on our knees. We're going to put one knee on each side of the handle, and, that, and we're just going to kind of paddle around and get our balance. that it was my first time I figured I'd try something new and uh, it was it was definitely fun at some points it's definitely difficult to stay balanced but uh, Cammie's a great instructor she's very thorough she I mean she's been doing it for a long time so we had some fun and uh, it, it can be difficult but you figure it out after a few minutes I would definitely do it again it was a great experience Oh, she was great. She went step by step. Um, if we had any questions, she covered them. She was really good. The powder boards are big, so your center of gravity is good. So it was really, it's a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I was, I was excited to do it, and once I got going, it was even more fun because I could do it. <laughs> It was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be very hard to balance, but it wasn't really that hard. My favorite part was watching them fall off. It's a lot easier than people think it is, and it's really fun. It's worth it. This actually was my first time paddleboarding. I was a little afraid that I wasn't going to be able to balance, but it ended up being pretty easy for me. I would definitely paddleboard again. It's a blast. It actually is easy. It's harder to stay stationary than it is when you're actually moving and, and letting the, the water do some of the work for you. As everybody else said, once you get your bearings, once you know you get great instructions, it's really not hard at all. I would absolutely recommend it to any Polk County citizen, any visitor coming to Polk County. we got great lakes here, and this is a fantastic family-friendly uh, activity. It was fun. Everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Sam Baker, and uh, like I hope footage? I hope you guys enjoyed this footage as much as we did. It's just it's funny seeing you out there. Uh, I didn't I didn't fall. Okay. I actually enjoy. Listen, I was very apprehensive, and, and full disclosure, uh, before we shot that, I'd actually had knee surgery about three months be prior Excuses, to that. That's all I hear. No, no, <laughs> no, it's 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 conquering because I didn't fall. Mm -hmm. So. I took, a, I took something and, and I made good out of it. Well, the PGTV staff was very nice to you. In the editing they, they process? They edited out all you falling. But yeah. before we get too far, I do want to thank Echo Suites for being the sponsor of our third segment uh, here on Sports Central. Absolutely. And uh, our third segment, we're going to talk more college football here uh, in Polk County. And uh, joining us now is Kurt 
Talley, the head coach of Warner University, and uh, he is in his first year as the head coach at Warner, so welcome to Sports Central, Coach. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate you having us. Absolutely. Well, this isn't your first year at Warner. Uh, the first two years, uh, this will be your third year. first two years, yes, you're sir. a defensive coordinator, so you already know the community, you already know the system, uh, but talk about the change from going from defensive coordinator at Warner to uh, having the head job and, and maybe some of the things that you're looking to do. Yeah, uh, first of all, I appreciate Coach Schaefer. You know, I think everybody in Polk County and around the state knows mm -hmm. Coach Schaefer. A uh, very well-respected coach. Um, happy that he hired me. And uh, that was kind of with uh, the plan was for me to take over when he retired. Wasn't sure when that was going to happen. And uh, so when he retired, I took over. This is my fifth head job, actually. I've been uh, a Division three coach for the last 19 years previous to Warner here. So I'm excited. Uh, we got a great group of kids, great staff, so it's an exciting time over at Warner University. Well, I know you were in the uh, St. Paul area, and uh, the yes, weather is a little bit different down Just here than it is up there, but I've got to think that the recruiting is a little bit different as well. Talk about that. It's, yeah, it's a different world down here in Florida, uh, culturally, football-wise, you name it. Weather uh, is certainly different. Um, really appreciate the football down here and even more so the athletes. We've got a ton of great kids, number one, and certainly a lot of guys that can run real fast. And uh, that's why people come into Florida, right, yep, to yep. Uh, steal the kids out of Florida and bring them to Texas and California and Ohio and those kinds of things. So. And they all got for good football too, but the speed here is in Florida. Yeah. Well, to to that point, and, and sorry, but You're good. but you talk about that. So do you do you view that differently now as a coach in Florida trying to keep the players in than you did <laughs> when you were in Minnesota trying to pull them out? You know, uh, Coach Scott talked about how it's just exploded here in the state, the small college football, mm -hmm. and it, and it really has. And Coach Schaefer um, really had a lot to do with that. He, he was part of that start at Weber, right. you know, years ago. And um, so it certainly changed because kids have an opportunity. If they're not a Division One guy or a Division even two guy, they can play small college football, and mm -hmm. it's really good football too. And so I love the fact that there's great opportunity for all these young guys that aren't quite fast enough, aren't quite big enough, mm -hmm. but they can still play really good college football. Yeah, and it gives it does give them that opportunity like we were talking about earlier because, I mean, there are guys that make it, and, you know, we, we hear about guys that are coming out of the NAIA and they're on, you know, they're on NFL rosters and they're out playing and they're, you know, they're on the practice squad or at least they're at least getting those looks. They're invited to camps and everything like that. So it's, it's great to see that uh, that come through for those guys that maybe Absolutely. don't have that that one extra intangible that right. doesn't put them in the division. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, looking at the last year, obviously it wasn't a season that uh, you guys uh, what the results weren't what you were hoping yeah, for. Yeah, the one loss record wasn't great. Mm -hmm. But we it. knew yeah. when Coach Schaefer was on here last year, of course, finishing 2-8, and eight, but uh, when Coach Schaefer was on prior to the season last year, that schedule was absolutely brutal from the yeah. get-go. So yeah. things didn't quite fall the way you want. What are we looking for yeah, this was, year? Yeah, it was a tough start last year. We finished really strong. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, you have the spring um, to – to do some things to get ready for the fall. And so we had a really good spring and uh, felt like we made the transition real well from one head coach to another. And then certainly this fall with the guys coming in, I should say August, right? We're not at fall yet, mm -hmm. but uh, August camp, we've got about half our guys are brand new. So they're sort of learning the ropes. We're doing things differently. And um, so they're learning how to do that. We have a new offensive coordinator. Ron's a new defensive coordinator, though Ron Scarlett's been around the program. Everybody, uh, probably a lot of people should know Ron Scarlett uh, when he was playing for Coach Schaefer back in the mid-90s, mm -hmm. quarterback and free safety. So mm -hmm. uh, it's been a great little uh, couple weeks already. That's fantastic. Of course, all home games are played at Lakeland Christian High School. And talk about that facility, because obviously not, not a facility on campus right now, but uh, being able to go to a facility like Lakeland Christian has there in Lakeland, great facility. Yeah, there's no doubt Lakeland Christian uh, has got a tremendous facility. And uh, I, you know, when we talk to the recruits when they're standing there watching the game and things like that or before the games, like, this isn't our facility. We want you to know, you know. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to give them any kind of false um, indication of who we are or what we are. And I don't care, Coach. This is really nice, yeah. you know. So <laughs> right. it's, it's great that we have the opportunity to, uh, to be able to use that facility. It's, it's, it's tough when it's 50 minutes away. But we'll take it. Uh, I think it's great that Weber's got 
a field on their campus now and more power to them. That's mm -hmm. awesome because that's what we're hoping to do, whether it's a year from now or 20 years from now, we want to have a stadium on campus someday. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that first home game is September 21st at 1.30, and uh, we talked about the, the start of the schedule last year, uh, but on September 21st, you play the preseason ranked number 13 team from uh, Lindsey Wilson College out right. of Kentucky. So talk about that a little bit. What, what, what are you expecting from this well, year's yeah, squad? Well, uh, yeah, we played them two years uh, ago at um, – Lakeland Christian there, and they, they pounded us pretty good. We, we shut their running game down, but they didn't need to run the football. They threw, I think they had five passes for like 220 yards. That's just the five passes. They probably completed about 20 or 25, but yeah, they beat us pretty good, and I didn't do a very good job. Um, so them coming back down here, we're excited for that. We, we've got uh, Cincinnati Christian. We're going to fly up there in a few weeks here. Two weeks from tomorrow, uh, we'll play them up in Cincinnati, so that'll be a fun trip. And then we open up with Bethel, who led the nation in all ca all divisions in scoring last year. So we open up with them as well these first couple games. The NAI doesn't really sound like they like you guys very much, do they? <laughs> yeah, we've we've had a rough, rough go in the mid south, but I say I say uh, uh, bring them on. You mm -hmm. know, if you want to be the best, you got to play the best. Exactly. Right? So. Yeah, and I think it also just is a testament too to, to how good we talk about it, you know, so much. A testament to how good everything is, the the brand of football is in this area because there's no easy team. Even if somebody's not ranked, you're gonna you have to go out there and give them your all because they're gonna look at you like we're ready to take you down. And it, it's just a testament to how good football is down yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely, Coach. What is the difference having been a head coach before, and then came down as defensive coordinator, now going back to being uh, the head coach. You were talking about the defensive stats from a couple of years ago. Obviously, still bothers you as a coach, you know, oh, yeah. how Those much games. the secondary gave up Absolutely. in that game. But how do you, or how does any coach, I guess, um, separate yourself from the position or the coordinator job that you had when you take over as a head coach? Because obviously, you can't do everything, and you have to rely upon the assistants that you've hired. But but how do you how do you switch that off in in your brain, game day or in game prep? Well, you know, being being human, uh, I knew coming down here that I would probably be the next head coach. Mm -hmm. So your brain's always thinking, how would I do things? I still want to serve uh, Coach Schaefer and have his program be the best that it can be. Yet you're thinking ahead. I mean, mm -hmm. every coach has got to be thinking ahead. Right. If if you don't have some vision for the next year, we got to be thinking about. You know, 2020, I'm mm -hmm. sure Coach Scott is too, recruiting and all those kinds of things. So you're always trying to stay one step ahead of the game. There's no doubt about that. Uh, the nice thing is that the players did know me, um, so it wasn't a big change. Uh, with Scarlett being there, that was huge. He, he really had a, a huge influence on us as far as our defense was uh, the last couple of years. I was here just uh, not even f halfway through the first season, and I said, when I become the head coach, Scarlett, I want you to be the defensive coordinator. So we've got a great staff, and, and that's huge. So I, they all have a football responsibility position, and then they all have an administrative position as well. So That's fantastic. Any predictions? I know coaches love to make predictions. <laughs> yeah, Any predictions of the make. first season? <laughs> <laughs> my, my only prediction is we're going to give it our best shot. You know, you, 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 can, um, you can't always be the best win the conference, win a national championship. We're going to strive for that, no doubt. You can't always play your best because sometimes the weather or official or here and there, but uh, we can always give it our best shot. So we're going to give it our best shot here. Tomorrow we scrimmage, and then in that first game, we've got to fly up to Cincinnati and uh, see how that goes and, and kind of go from there and, and certainly uh, finish out the season. How difficult is it when you have a road game like that where you've got to jump on a plane and go up there and, and, and corral these, these youngsters? Yeah, it, it's going to be crazy because it was already going to be a tight window because uh, we're coming back that night on Saturday night and oh, okay. they moved the flight up 15 minutes and I'm like, no, you know, because you need to be there two hours <laughs> early and to try and it's like herding yeah. cats sometimes yeah. with these guys. So I said, we may have to skip showers and even eating. And they really didn't like that, so... All right. Well, Coach, we appreciate it, and we wish you nothing but good luck uh, on the season, and uh, we hope to have you back on, on Sports Central. But we are just absolutely thrilled with, you know, having three college football teams in Polk County, and if there's anything that we can do to, to help promote it and, and keep it uh, going strong, just let us know. Yeah, thanks, Neil. Thanks, mm -hmm. Sam. I appreciate you both. Thank you so All much right. for coming on.
All right. Well, if that doesn't get you excited for college football, I don't know what will, but uh, we're looking forward to it. But uh, we're going to go to break real quick. We have some uh, footage from a cross country and track star from George Jenkins High School. Stick around. Sam and Neil will be right back here on Sports Central. Um, my name is Alicia Ruiz. I'm in 10th grade and I run track and field and I do cross country for Drake Jenkins. Well, I got inspired by my dad and many other athletes and it started off like I was racing my cousins and I really didn't take it serious until my dad like showed me the sport and I decided to do it. I do, the, I do a lot of events. I do the um, 800, 1600, sometimes 32, the 400s, 4x4, 4x8. Uh, for cross country, I feel like there's a lot more competition and I feel like like there's hills and it's kind of like hard, like you can't get tired. And for a track, it's basically the same thing, like keeping your pace. Well, I knew she was going to be something special because I already knew about her from what she'd done in middle school, so before she came to Jenkins. So uh, I had watched her. She, I could tell that she was a hard worker. So I was excited that she was coming and joining the team. And I could tell she had a great attitude just from the few times that I talked to her, so I was excited from that standpoint. Where she has improved the biggest uh, over really the last year is in racing. In the past, she would go out and run, meaning she would go out a lot of times too hard. And that's something that we talked about a lot last year in races. She'd go out way too fast in that, in that first lap and you could really tell it would affect her in the second lap. So she's dropped her times uh, big time. Just this year alone, she dropped her time from last year in the 400 by two and a half seconds. She dropped her time in the 800 by five seconds. She dropped her time in the 1600 by 18 seconds. Those are huge, huge drops. In cross country, she dropped her time by 42 seconds. But the two biggest thing is, one, she, ne she does not take her talent for granted. She's got talent. But she, she's not resting on any laurels. She knows she's got to continue to work and work hard to continue to get better. And then again, like I said, she became, in my opinion, this past year, both in cross country and track, a much better racer. Coach, he always pushes me. He tells me what I need and not to do. And it, it helps me a lot. My teammates are my sisters. And communication skills and like being motivated, um, being a good sport, sticking to the game, don't give up. It's just having faith in God and like good practices and good support. My parents are so embarrassing with that. Like they, <laughs> they are so supportive of me and they'll do anything for me. I got injured last year and a lot of people thought I was gonna be able to run again, but I proved them wrong and I got more stronger. I was doing the 200 for a senior night and my hip bone popped and it was very tough. Yeah, she won class 4A 800 meters, uh, which is the highest class. Uh, and she's at, she was actually the first uh, state champion from George Jenkins, girls or guys ever, in track and field in any event. Um, and she, she ran a perfect race. We talked about the race strategy, and she went out and did it. She's, she has a great commitment level. She understands what the word commitment means. I know she wants to run at the next level, so I'm doing everything I can to, to help her get there. Um, but it's just not out here. Um, she's doing well in the classroom. She's got good grades. Uh, because in track and field, unfortunately, they don't give a whole lot of full ride scholarships because they don't have a lot of scholarships. It's not like college football where they have 80 scholarships. Track and field, most schools only have 16 to 17 scholarships. And that's total between the girls and guys team. So they have to break those up. So obviously they look at people like her that have got very good times, but also got the grades and can get money academically. So between the academic and the athletic, that's where the full rides can come into play. Okay, so I want to be in the 2020 Olympics. So I'm like, in order to get there, I got to train hard and push through. So you never know what you could do until you try it. Can y'all follow me on Instagram at Alicia underscore Scott Five.
everybody, welcome back to the fourth and final segment of Sports Central, and the segment is going to be brought to us by the Holiday Inn in Winter Haven, a great partner of tourism and sports mm -hmm. marketing, but uh, just another example of great athletes in Polk County. I know. She was an example of what, uh, how great our season was last year. She, uh, Alicia, contributed to our 20-plus uh, state championships. Mm -hmm. She won uh, last year's Florida State Championship in the 800-meter run and uh, also won cross country athlete of the year so she is a highly uh you know awarded athlete uh, going into her last season at george yeah. jenkins the polk county all sports awards is not a uh, hard event to find worthy <laughs> athletes but Definitely uh, not in this area. it takes good partnerships to put that on and uh, of course good partners here at pgtv but another great partner that uh, tourism and sports marketing is working with is the city of winter haven and at uh, this time we'd like to welcome t michael stavris to the program and uh t michael thanks so much for joining thanks, guys. us mm -hmm. glad to be here again so I hear, you know, around the office that you guys are in the middle of a construction project. <laughs> of course, we're just talking small. about the brand new Winter Haven Fieldhouse and the Conference Center. Uh, maybe just start us off with give us kind of an update, kind of a status report on where we're at, and then we can talk about all the fun stuff that's going to be coming. Certainly. So as I said, I think last time I was here, we're doing this little addition, <laughs> little add-on to yeah. the Chain Lakes Complex of uh, uh, somewhere around 86,000 square feet. So we started construction in uh, about October of last year. We broke ground, mm -hmm. and um, we have been nonstop since. And we, uh, in fact, I was just at the job site this morning, um, and uh, to see what's happening in there today, and know that we've got, but it's August now, so we're looking three months maybe left on our construction. You know, walls are up, roofs on, and now it's that fun interior finish mm -hmm. stuff that's starting to happen. They were hanging tile in bathrooms when I was there, and. Uh, we're starting to put some windows in the building, so get it dried out and ready to uh, start laying some hardwood floors in there. So there's a lot happening right now. I think, of course, you know, I don't know, it's been a month or so or more when we got the hard hat tour right. with, with you, and we, we certainly appreciated that. I was blown away with, I, I had a similar moment in walking through that facility. Uh, the new facility is huge, and it's all inspired and all those things, but the way the city, way the contractors, the way the designers, everybody blended it with the previous building. And, and I compared it to going to Publix Field at Joker Martin Stadium. Unless you saw it before, I don't think you can fully appreciate what has been done. And this is very similar with uh, what's going to happen with Theater Winter Haven, the arts and culture, the black box, and all that. In the old meeting space, the way it's all been, I don't want to say pushed together, but blended together, unbelievable. Yeah, so the. Uh, it it's really seeming two buildings together. And mm -hmm. I think maybe when you were there, we could even show you there was there was the wall of the new building, yeah. and here's the wall of the old building. You could see there, the old court on the floor. It's just right there, the <laughs> old basketball court underneath yeah. part of the floor. Um, the the theater, you know, the, the Presenium Theater, Theater Winter Haven, what a phenomenal program they have. One yeah. of the best community theaters in, in the nation. So good. Um, they'll still have their space, but they'll have all new entries into that space and some upgrades with it. Uh, the Ridge Art Association and their programming, mm -hmm. again, a beautiful new entry point into the gallery space. Everything that's happening um, was really designed around how do we preserve the good stuff from the old building um, and how do we make that happen together. We always knew that the buildings would function together and just this past summer the, the Winter Haven City Commission um, uh, so graciously agreed to let's go ahead and improve all the exterior aesthetics of the old building mm -hmm. to mirror the new building as well. So from the inside, you know, they're going to look like one, but from the outside, it's going to look like one massive new building, even though 56,000 square feet of it is the original space that has been there since the mid-70s. I think the, the, the thing that's lost maybe on, you know, either the residents of, of Winter Haven, residents of Polk County, they see a major construction project like that, but there are so many details, there's so many meetings, there's so many conference calls, there's so much discussion to make sure that, you know, like anything, you, you have one chance to, to get it right and to serve the needs of everyone because, you know, it's a blend between um, having a, des a deficit of indoor facilities on the east side of the county and in Winter Haven, but also, uh, the you know, having a primary uh, tourism uh, draw of creating overnight stays and, and the economic impacts and, and benefits to the city of Winter Haven and to Polk County. A lot goes into that to right. making sure that everybody is served under that umbrella. And you've got so many partnerships that are critical to it. So you have the Water Management District who's involved in your permitting, DEP, mm -hmm. FDOT, and District 1 FDOT, LK Nandum, his folks are making huge commitments to, to the success of this. Uh, the county, the, the architect, the contractors, everybody involved has to play from the same sheet of music 
knowing that the music's being written a lot of times as you're playing it. Right. So, and, and there, there are many, many details that you have to get right mm -hmm. that probably the general public doesn't really notice because you got it right. But if you hadn't, what would it be? So, yeah. perfect example, <laughs> we spent probably two and a half, three hours yesterday just going through furniture. Uh, everything from the finish on furnitures to the type of fabrics, how does it match up with flooring material. And that's a lot of fun, it really mm -hmm. is, and we've got great people with, with strong trout architects that are helping with that, mm -hmm. but it's, it's meticulous. And if you got it wrong, you know, if you walked into that restroom and that tile that was on the restroom wall just didn't look right, people are going to notice it. Um, so there's a lot of time and energy, and fortunately we've got some great experts that are involved. The other piece of it, and, and we uh, had communications just as recently as, as this morning with, with the staff from the county on things pertaining to court layouts mm -hmm. and, and the meticulous detail of how wide does the striping really need to be for that volleyball court or that basketball court. Because if you get it wrong, mm -hmm. it has a huge impact on mm -hmm. how the facility is sure. finally used. So you've got to pay attention to the little things because if you don't, they become big things. And we can't, we can't have big things going wrong. So. Absolutely not. And you, and you look at it, we're not only welcoming the residents of the city of Winter Haven or residents of Polk County, but literally going to be welcoming guests from uh, you know, regional uh, state, national, and international events to uh, the field house and conference center. So, you know, it's all about the experience when they get in there because they may end up having such a great experience, they end up maybe moving to Winter Haven or then, and all the things that go along with that. I mean, you look at uh, the amount of uh, Michiganders that live in the Lakeland area or the Polk County area because of the Tigers and their long-standing thing. So if you, t if you look at the field house with that, it's truly about economic impact and, and, and bettering uh, the quality of life for Polk County at the end of the day. Absolutely, and, and, and you're right. The, so the folks that are going to come to this facility, whether they're from uh, the local leagues that we run, mm -hmm. they're maybe from high school events that take place in there, regional events, international events. You know, the, the Winter Haven swim team uh, hosts meets throughout the year, and they draw internationally for that. Well, right. Those are folks that are coming here. They may be coming for swimming, but they see that field house, and it sparks their interest for maybe something else they come back for for another sport. Um, our international guests with Legoland Florida, you mm -hmm. know, this is, this is an iconic facility right here in Winter Haven. And right. if you're coming from the Tampa area, as you come across U.S. Highway 17 and that bridge uh, going from Lake Ship to Lake Lulu, the first thing you're going to see is this massive recreation complex. So that's yeah. pretty exciting. It's fantastic. And as you talked about, uh, a lot of uh, partnerships, of course, the, the Lakeland Magic, the uh, NBA G League team playing their games at the RP Funding Center uh, will be practicing out of the, the Winter Haven uh, Fieldhouse and Conference Center. So you look at the partnerships across the county. I, I know I said earlier about you know, professional baseball and soccer and basketball and, and all the thing, college football. It really is a new and, and unique time in Polk County. And, and certainly the city of Winter Haven have been good partners and on the leading edge of that. And we, we truly appreciate that from the county side. And it's, it's a two-way street. We couldn't do this without Polk County. And I'll be the first to say that. The, uh, um, the Winter Haven City Commission uh, has, has really built a great relationship with, a, with the Board of County Commissioners and the TDC. Um, that is a, a joint vision of what this facility is going to become. And we're excited to have the Lakeland Magic's G team in there. Um, the, uh, their facilities are going to be state of the art and uh, it's, it, just that influence of those professional athletes back towards our amateur athletes locally I think is going to be a tremendous outcome. Well, T. Michael, we appreciate it. And uh, looking at some numbers, of course, the projections and, and you know, 60 plus events uh, next year or annually and over $22 million economic impact to Polk County, just some numbers to look at and go, geez, that, <laughs> those are some That's big exciting. numbers for the, for the mm -hmm. county in a space that doesn't exist right now uh, because this is a different space than what the RP right. Funding Center has. So it complements, it's not com competing against, it complements too. So thank you so much for thank all you that guys. you guys are doing uh, with that, the city of Winter Haven. And we'll get you back real soon when it's open. We'll take a little tour of it on camera. There we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. Well, that's going to wrap up another Sports Central. It was a slam pack show, and uh, we're so happy to have our partners here with us. And it really does take a, a, a large community coming together to do all these things. Special thanks to some of our sponsors, the Hampton Inn Winter Haven, Ovation Bistro and Bar, Hampton Inn Lakeside, and Home to Suites, as well as Echo Suites. Uh, every Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m., you can tune into the radio version of Sports Central on Talk 1430 yeah. and Talk 96.7. Of course, that's you and McKenzie yeah. quite often. <laughs> You'll hear more of our voices than yours. 
Yes, and, and, and <laughs> I'm sure everybody will like that. Uh, our next live show of Sword Central will come to you on August 30th, but if you need more information about what's going on in Polk County, you can go to visitcentralflorida.org or centralfloridasports.com. For Sam Baker, I'm Neil Duncan. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again next time.